What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you ladies and gentlemen. We have potential tropical cyclone 22 that has just formed in the Caribbean Sea. It is right now approaching Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and the Bahamas and bringing very, very heavy rainfall along with it, which has the huge threat of potentially causing massive uh, flash flooding, potentially a lot of mudslides, as well as the winds that are expected to be impacting a lot of these areas right there. Some exceeding 50 miles per hour sustained, 60 mile per hour gusts. And for a country like Haiti, that is absolutely not what you want to hear right there. So here's the situation we have going on at this current point. We have our first advise we have our advisory for potential tropical cyclone 22. Current maximum sustained winds are at 35 miles per hour. The minimum central pressure is 1004 millibars. Its current location is 25.2 uh, degrees north, 81.5 degrees west. And it's moving north northeast at 9 miles per hour. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is 70% and the same in 7 days if we go ahead and show you the other outlooks that we have as well this thing was tagged as an area of interest as invest 98l and chances really started to ramp up as organization really started to kick in of uh, then where we were yesterday now we're at ptc 22 at this current point in time if we go ahead and show you that and show you the rest of the rest of the public advisory at this current point in time, we have tropical storm watches in effect for Jamaica, Haiti, the Cuban provinces of Guantanamo, Saint Mo, sorry, Guantanamo, Santiago de Cuba, Hulguin, uh, Gar uh, uh, Garnama, and Las Tunas, and the southeastern Bahamas and Turks and Caicos right there. Tropical storm watch means tropical storm conditions are possible generally within 48 hours. For more information, go to your National Weather, uh, Meteorological Weather Service right there. Here's what we have going on with the graphics right here. We're going to go and show you the cone as right here. It is forecasted to start uh, slowly moving uh, through much of the uh, the Caribbean and parts of the Bahamas and exit by Saturday at this current point in time. It is expected to be approaching Cuba and the Bahamas as a 50 mile per hour tropical storm before moving off and really picking up the pace as it moves through the Atlantic as a post tropical cyclone. But yeah, as you can see right here, all of Jamaica is under a tropical storm watch. All of Haiti is under a tropical storm watch. It hasn't expanded yet into the Dominican Republic. However, if this thing does move far enough to the east, I could definitely see a scenario where that does happen. Tropical storm watches are in effect for parts of Cuba. Tropical storm watches are in effect for parts of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos right there. So this, there is no real playing around with this. There's really no joking when it comes to this. If we go ahead and show you the discussion we have right here. Uh, the NHC has been monitoring the development of a broad area of low pressure in the Western Caribbean Sea during the past several days. Satellite images and recent data from Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft indicate the low has closed but uh, as a closed but broad circulation, and there's no evidence yet of a well-defined center. So the circulation on this thing is already closed, but it really needs to kind of concentrate itself and tighten up a bit. If we go ahead and show you the recon that we have at this current point in time, here's the situation we have. They have found ample evidence of a close circulation as this thing is approaching Jamaica, as this thing is approaching the rest of the greater Antilles, and that's what they report, and that's why they tagged this potential tropical cyclone 22 right here. A longitated bands of deep convection expand, expand over much of the eastern part of the circulation and are st uh, streaming northward towards portions of the Great Area Antilles. Since the system is forecast to become a tropical storm, there is a risk of tropical storm force winds across portions of the Greater Antilles, southeastern Bahamas, and Turks and Caicos Islands during the next couple of days. Advisories are being initiated on tropical uh, potential tropical cyclone 22. The initial motion is uncertain at this current point in time. The system is broad and nature as broad nature increasingly sh southerly sheer and nearby dry air suggests that they won't likely strengthen much that said this disturbance could become a tropical depression or tropical storm tonight or on friday if the circulation can be con uh, con uh, can contract enough for a well-defined center to form conditions sh uh, should be sufficiently conducive to allow for modest strengthening and the nhc intensity forecast is just below the ic of vcn and hc consensus aids 
Most of the global uh, model fields indicate that the cyclone should become extratropical in three days and become absorbed by day five. The most significant hazard of the system is likely heavy rainfall, especially in areas of east of higher terrain across ports to Jamaica, southeastern Cuba, and Hispaniola. At this current point in time, it is forecast to become a tropical uh, depression in the next 12 hours and then a 50 mile per hour tropical storm in the next two days as it's impacting Cuba, as it's impacting the Bahamas, as it's impacting Hispaniola, and really bringing those impacts all across the board over there. So that's what we have going on with the discussion at this current point in time. If we go ahead and I'll uh, show you some of the key messages, it's mainly uh, for, uh, the uh, PTC-22 uh, forecast to become a tropical storm, and heavy rains are expected across much of, pa of Panama, Cuba, Costa Rica, Jamaica, Hispaniola through Monday morning. This rainfall will likely produce flash flooding and all those areas right there at this current point in time. So yeah, over the last 24 hours, we were looking at, and eh, this may not develop. The chances seem to be decreasing. But last night, the system really got its act together, and now it's organizing into a tropical system at this current point in time. Will this be Tropical Storm Vince? We'll have to wait and see how that whole thing plays out. But what I can tell you is short term, the conditions do look definitely favorable for tropical development. However, long term, they're not going to be nearly as favorable as they are now in the Caribbean Sea. So we all need to keep in mind all of that as time continues to go on. If we go ahead and show you the European model as of right now, we're going to show you this mainly for the operational. We'll also show you the ensembles. We'll show you the shear forecast and the moisture forecast as we continue to go into this. We start to see signs of organization and development. 1,004 millibar system. This thing is honestly a, a, a kind of behind the schedule at this current point in time if you think about it. The only thing that's uh, out is the 6Z, which came out about 9 o'clock this morning. So, uh, well, uh, so we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out. <laughs> But either way, the way I, the way we're looking at this, this thing is expected to make landfall across Jamaica while bringing heavy rain to Cuba, Haiti, potentially the Dominican Republic, and then bringing some gusty winds with that as well, as well as parts of the, of the Bahamas and those areas right there. So definitely a very serious situation for a lot of you who are tuning in from Hispaniola, tuning in from the Bahamas, tuning in from Jamaica, tuning in from Central America. We have a pretty bad situation that's about to unfold. If we go ahead and show you the European ensembles right here, here's the e, uh, here's the, Europe, uh, the MCL uh, P main sea level pressure uh, ensemble members right here. Showing signs of organization and development. We do have a couple of scenarios of hurricane strength as it approaches Cuba. However, those are isolated scenarios, and we do see like three, four, or five of them out of a span of like 30. But we'll have to see how that whole thing plays out. Most likely, in my opinion, we're going to see a 50 to 60 mile per hour tropical storm move through those areas, but produce extremely heavy rainfall and, th and then just kind of cause a lot of mudslides, cause a lot of flash flooding, cause a lot of those that stuff that's going on at this current point in time. <laughs> and then this really makes landfall in Jamaica, Cuba. While it stays west of Hispaniola, the outer bands are absolutely going to pummel Haiti. They are definitely going to be pummeling the western half of the Dominican Republic. And then the system moves towards the Bahamas while accelerating in speed and really coming out and dissipating and moving out to sea as time continues to go on. That's the European ensemble at this current point in time. So with that being, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you the shear forecast and the moisture component to all of this. So here's the shear forecast that we can pinpoint at this current point in time here's the 200 to 850 millibar wind shear in knots right here the shear forecast the shear across much of the caribbean uh, sea right here where the system is mainly organizing it has backed off over the last 24 hours as you can see right here it's really backed off over that time and it's allowing the system to breathe and potentially grow as this thing starts to really organize and develop into a tropical cyclone it's already a potential tropical cyclone it still needs to it still needs to really concentrate its circulation before it gets there, but it should have no problem doing that, especially with all the conditions we are seeing. I, in my opinion, what I'm looking at this is the shear that's in over here in the western part of the system. It's far enough away to really help the system organize and develop and allow this the outflow to really expand outward and help this circulation flow a lot better. So definitely something to pay attention to as time continues to go on. However, from what I am seeing right here, 
it's going to generally be, at least in the short term, be very beneficial for it as it approaches Jamaica. However, in the long term, it's going to help. It's going to more or less hurt it as this thing does start to approach Cuba and those areas. As it's going to hinder its intensification phase. That and land interaction with Jamaica, with Cuba, and the Bahamas, and that. But. Really, the clo uh, the closer this shear gets, the less of a chance you start seeing with that tro uh, with this thing strengthening right here. And then, as this thing makes landfall in Cuba, the shear is pretty much right on top of it. And as it moves through, it starts to t uh, tear the system apart. And really, uh, by day five over here, things really start to get uh, to just completely just collapse and absorb with a low pressure system as time continues to go on. So that's what we have going on with the shear forecast. If we show you the moisture component to all of this, the moisture has been something I've continue to keep a very close eye on because as you can see right here the moisture component has not really been that much of an issue when it comes to tropical development i was anticipating a bit of dry air maybe at about 24 hours from now to start intruding in it but no this system is ahead of schedule this system is ahead of its time and it's ahead of that potential dry slot that could potentially hurt its development right there and my best bet is, is that if it can close off its circulation more and concentrate it a bit more, it definitely can develop pretty much by the end of tonight, pretty much potentially by the end of this evening, if we're thinking about it, maybe by like 10 o'clock at night, uh, Eastern time. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on and the moisture forecast really in the next 24 hours is allowing the system to breathe and grow and develop as time continues to go on the sheer not the sheer but the moist air kind of just remains in the western part of the caribbean sea over here away from this moist air pocket that this thing's taking full advantage of there may be a bit of dry air that could try to intrude it as it approaches jamaica however based off of what i'm seeing so far based off all the convection i'm noticing right here i don't think it's really going to have that much of a, ch a chance to do that until it mo passes jamaica and starts making a run for Cuba right there. And then as time continues to go on, the dry air does start to kind of overtake it and start to kill it off as it approaches Cuba right there and then starts to approach the Bahamas right there after bringing its heavy rainfall. It looks like dry air does start to intrude it and then the shear will kind of just absolutely just destroy it right on top of that. So that's uh, that's the really the moisture forecast when it comes to it because based off of what I'm seeing, first 24 hours, great moisture for development. Anything after that is going to be a bit iffy, but after 60 hours, absolutely there's going to be dry air that's going to intrude in the system. So that's stuff we need to continue to pay attention to as time continues to go on, and we will keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But before we go, I want to make a quick note about how resilient the system is, because we were looking at a 70% chance of formation before we even had an X on it, before we had a low-pressure system overly defined. Then the chances went down, as it started showing signs of disorganization. But then last night, it really ramped up and really brought those chances back to par. So this is definitely something to keep an eye on as we continue to look through the next 24 to 48 hours. We're closing the video out right here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out and helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.